Beloved, welcome back to episode eight on this very cold and windy day of building a cozy cabin. Well, a lot has taken place. We're coming into week two and we'll be setting up, or I will not be, I'll be hiring someone to set up the forms and pour the foundation. Mr. Jiraiya just finished grading all the gravel in here. We put about 10 yards of gravel in, about a three inch lift to even all this out so we have a nice flat crawl space. But right now we have another problem. I, uh, I screwed up. When we laid out for the 400 amp service meter base, we measured everything or we eyeballed it and it looked really good. Well, I messed up and I pushed one leg to the front of the trench. And so it's probably four or five, six inches out of angle with the road. It's, it's sitting at an angle. Now I knew that I've been looking at it for a couple days and I thought there's no way I'm moving that thing. Absolutely no way. And I just thought, well, I'll just have to deal with it. My OCD is just going to have to take the hit and I'll have to deal with it. And then last night I got a photo of my crooked work uh, from one of the war band members who said that his OCD was going crazy. And I, I, I realized this morning it's going to have to happen. We're going <laughs> to absolutely <laughs> have to move it. So Mr. Jariah is just finishing it up. We're going to try to nudge it without destroying everything and get it properly oriented with the road. I was of the opinion that I would bring the excavator over here and just dig out behind it and push it over. Mr. Jariah talked me out of that, said, let's just dig it by hand, move it by hand so we don't break and tear anything up. And I think that's going to be the better way. So he's got it dug out behind and we're going to use this big lever and see if we can't work that over. Yeah, I think we should, uh, this is not twisting. So if we dig this around, just like we did there, we'll just have, it'll twist and then we can put it in place. While he's doing that, I'm going to, we'll make a stake and put a leg on it so it doesn't fall over. We'll start by making a stake. I've got this old scabby two by six we can chop up. We'll put this stake in the ground and then we can put a, a kicker off that leg to hold it up so we don't lose everything. Close enough for now? Yeah. Okay. All right, let me cut a handle for that other side and we'll just manhandle it over. Since we need to move this leg back five inches, now this one needs to rotate because this is all built together. So we're gonna finish digging this out and then lag this on here and help rotate that just a couple degrees to keep everything in alignment. And to do that, we need timber screws. So Mr. Dry just went and grabbed a few of those. It's pretty sturdy. Should we tweak on it, see if it'll jiggle at all? I think we might have some more digging to do. Nope, more digging. As you probably noticed, we got the hydrant in. I thought we would uh, do a little flow test here. Let's turn on the meter and uh, see what type of pressure and flow we're getting out of this. It's opposite. Yep, got it. There seems to be a fair amount of confusion about me having uh, a water, being hooked up to a water meter. So I guess I'll explain the situation. We have a very small local water district. I think there are 120 some odd customers on it. It costs $24 a month. This is non-treated water. It comes straight down from the glaciers and uh, into a distribution center. And the reason why there are meters on there 
is that as the there are only so many connections you can have in the valley so they got to keep track of how much is being used so that they know on in the future you know for expansion you know how many additional houses could we put on the si system because there's a finite amount this is better than a well because one it's gravity feed it's non-treated meaning there's no chemicals in it it's not, it's not to say but it's all tested it's, it's not to say that we're going to get some contaminated water or some a deer or a bear is going to die in the aquifer or you know poison the aquifer it's it's monitored tested annually it's certified it's just gravity feed and it's $24 a month. So I think we pay more than that for the electricity of our well pump, especially for irrigating. We've got a five gallon bucket here and I will start a timer and we'll see how long it takes to fill and then we can figure out what our GPM is. Go. Okay, 12, <clears throat> 12 seconds to fill a five gallon bucket. Oops. Yeah, so Mr. Jirai and I had all of our fingers out and uh, <laughs> to, <laughs> to do this math, uh, 25 gallons a minute. 25 gallons a minute is what this hydrant will flow at the three quarters. So it would be really cool when we get the run that one inch main all the way up to the shop 2.0 uh, to see what we get from that, what that flow will be. And we'll, we'll, uh, we'll I'll do that when we put that in, that'd be interesting, but that's good. 25 GPM, that, uh, that gets after it with good pressure too, from gravity. It's, I think it's that back side right there. You think, you think I, need yeah, to cut you? I think so. Okay. I think that's what's, what that's, that's hanging us up. Some of you more astute prohos may have realized or noticed that we've buried some two by sixes in the ground. There's one right there and there's one right here. Now this is a pro tip. The reason why these are here is that this is a, a board that's sitting right at the end of a future connection of a pipe. Could be a water pipe, could be a sewer pipe, but when you have something that you want to bury that you're going to want to come back and find later, what you do is you take a two by four, two by six, and you put it right on the end, sit it right on the end of the pipe and then bury it. So now when we want to find this, I can come here with, with my excavator. I can follow this down and dig down there with no chance of breaking it or tearing stuff up. So this is a good practice to, to use. Because the front of that grounding rod or grounding wire that's perfectly flat right there. Okay, that probably did it. Go right there. See if, it... if we could get up enough just to get that rock to roll under there. Oh, that was better. That's it. Gentlemen, you're just in time for the cold start. Probably about 50 degrees right now. It's gonna get down to 27 tonight. We're setting up to do the three inch conduit, but since we move that post back six inches, I'm gonna come in and just trim that corner piece right there. While Mr. Jirai is having lunch, I'm going to run down to the hardware store and grab some concrete so we can get those posts sealed in. Sell your cloak. Sell your cloak and buy a sword. Get out of the way. I'll run you down. Deer, ADHD fueled by rabies.
It is a tremendous blessing to have such a nice little local hardware store. There it is. All right, gentlemen, let's load up. They even sell Mexican Coke in the glass bottle. How about that? I was visiting with the locals and he came out and loaded me up. This is a good hardware store. Let's cut this off, maybe a 16. And then I'll just recut it when it's smaller. Oh, it's a little bit more manageable. Get some experience with this actually. Makita is losing the power tool war they're not uh, innovating their stuff is old-fashioned and, and it's and it's more expensive than some even Mil, some of Milwaukee and DeWalt's when you're doing your glue ups you want to do both pieces these big three inchers once they uh, once they stick and quit moving you're not going to move them so you get one chance at this glue the bell first that way you can put it down and it's not getting in the dirt and then you glue your male section last it should have the bigger can of glue for this big conduit but this is the mini one Set and twist and hold. It'll hydraulically push out, so you have to hold on to it for about 15, 20 seconds or so. All right, put your end down. Put my end down. Down, more, 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 and in. Okay, good, we got it. Make it 32. And go, shut. More, more twist, 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 twist and push. There we go. All right, set it where you want it. Turn it, twist it. There you go. Not too much. Excellent. Yes. Everything. It looks good.
great. That, that'll do it. Thank you. All right. Mr. Dry is going to mix up some concrete, and I'm going to uh, put a little form up here, the kicker, so we don't lose our mud. And we'll put another 240 pounds of concrete in here. I don't think that'll kick out. All right, gentlemen, here it is. We got the conduit in. We're ready for inspection. Everything went really well. I'm glad we moved that. It was a little bit of work, a few hours of work, but it was bothering me. Now it is square with the fence line, square with the road, with the posts. Very nice. So we put uh, the concrete in there. We'll let that set up. And then tomorrow we'll uh, backfill those and we're re ready to set up forms. Should be setting up forms this week so probably run a plate compactor in there and that is the final grade where the 14 or 18 by 24 cabin is going to sit it's going to have a nice view too all right beloved that's a wrap for episode eight tomorrow well i don't know what tomorrow is going to bring we have another little side quest that we're going to take I'm going to go pick up the materials for but I'll let you know on that. But thank you for watching. If you haven't already, take a moment to click the thumbs up. May God bless you and your families. Please keep us in your prayers, and we'll see you all on the next video.